There's no weekend cheer for investors this Friday. So-called risk assets all in the red, thanks to soft earnings and worries over the US fiscal cliff and slowing global growth. I'm Jamie McGeever and this is Market Pulse. Well, among the biggest decliners today are Eurozone banks. This comes after S&P downgraded its view on French banks late on Thursday. It cut France's largest bank, BNP Paribas, to A+, from AA-, warning it is becoming more exposed to a potentially protracted recession in the Eurozone. But our chart of the day looks at Ericsson. The telecoms gear maker down close to 5% after saying core profits slumped 42% in the third quarter. Ericsson now promising a new round of cost-cutting and efficiency gains. It's been a tough week also for oil traders. Brent crude down for the second week in a row, something we haven't seen for four months. Out now to Eugen Weinberg, he's head of commodity research at Commerce Bank in Frankfurt. Eugen, uh, thanks for joining us. Now, Brent is down about 7 8% in the last 10 days. How much more can the price fall between now and the end of the year? Uh, definitely the economic concerns and the continuing oversupply, they continue to weigh on the uh, oil prices currently. But I think that the current prices do not really reflect the risks on the supply side. And I would be rather looking for stabilisa stabilisation at the current levels and even a pickup towards the year end because I think that the, on the supply side we still have huge risks and they're not yet reflected in the current prices. But the slide might continue on the uh, downbeat sentiment. What are those supply risks? Are you, are you talking about um, Middle East tensions? Uh, definitely. That's the most important thing here. You know, last year, after the um, um, fall of the Libyan production by 1.6 million barrels, uh, the oil price jumped by some 20, 30 percent. So just imagine what would have happened if the Strait of Hormuz were um, um, every day 16 million barrels of oil being transported will be closed for any significant time. So definitely this risk is not yet reflected and definitely um, there are no uh, real risk right now, but uh, they might be coming over, the coming over the coming months and I think that should be reflected already in the current prices, which is, it doesn't at the moment. Having said that though, the, the factors on the demand side are pretty, you know, they are stacking up. Uh, we've got um, the world economy slowing, Oil demand is slowing, companies' earnings aren't so great, and of course we've got the US fiscal cliff. Um, it'd be a brave trader to, to go long of oil here, no? Yeah, definitely. There are not so many reasons, and also looking at the um, not only at the demand side, which is uh, presumably very weak and still continues to, to stay weak in Europe as well as in the US, but looking at the production side in the US, we see the oil production rising towards the uh, um, 17-year high, the, the highest level since 1995, and with uh, inventories there being built up uh, week after week. So it's definitely very difficult to be bullish for the oil price in a, in a short term. But as I said, that um, first of all, I believe that uh, the economies um, are going to recover. Um, next year, and not only in China should show a very significant growth next year, but also the growth should pick up in uh, in the US and also stabilize here in Europe. So I think that we are probably underestimating at the moment the, um, um, the, the underestimating the demand for this for the next year and probably overestimating the supply. So probably the prices are uh, right now on a lower end of the trading range okay, for the coming well, last, last question and very quickly if you can. Uh, we've been talking about Brent. What about NYMEX? The fall has been much steeper and faster than NYMEX. Uh, what's your target for year end? <laughs> That's a very difficult question, it's because it seems to be just a number, because there is no real correlation between the WTI and the world market. We believe that the arbitrage, the continuing arbitrage, will continue to um, um, bring this gap between those two sorts closer, and we believe that next year this gap is likely to fall again, yet again, below $10. Right now it's $22. So WTI is likely to stabilize between $80 and $85 and to increase towards the area and above $90 and over $100 next year. OK, well, again, thank you very much. Well, staying with commodities, Anglo-American CEO Cynthia Carroll has stepped down after more than five years in the job. The move comes as investors grow increasingly unhappy over the company's flagging share price, as well as its dependence on increasingly troubled South Africa. This um, is not an easy decision for me. I think it's the right time 
to hand the baton on to someone else who can continue to capitalize and develop off the foundation that we have been building. Carol's departure leaves just two female bosses at FTSE 100 companies. Uh, just worth adding that Anglo-American share price is bucking the trend today up to and a quarter percent. That's all from us for now, but join us every day at this time for a look at what's moving on markets and why. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.